we learn? Did we learn anything? <laughs> Fucking default? User joined yeah, the channel. Yeah, just leave it on default. default. Don't touch it. Yep. What do heck? I don't know, dude. Okay, like, I, whatever. I've man. always manually set mine in. Fucking default master race. <laughs> For real. It works. Don't tempt the gods. Oh, don't okay. worry, I'm already tempting the gods by using fucking voice mode right now. I'm pretty People. sure my computer's about to explode. Fucking Outer Planet Alliance. Okay. I wish I was Marco Sonaro. That's a handsome man. It's a handsome man with purpose in his life. He does have a nice ass. You Who? too could have a purpose. All you have to do is become a terrorist. <laughs> no, I would be a freedom fighter. We've already clarified this, Phoenix. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. So you could do that. All you have to do is uh, be a freedom fighter. <laughs> Are you pro-U.S. imperialism or anti-U.S. imperialism? Because that's really what is the dictator. I only support... The China's. <laughs> China will label you a terrorist just for whatever. <laughs> and it will ship you off to concentration clamp camps that they actually <laughs> call uh, re education facilities. Let me check my I skin color I thought they were called swatch. concentration claps. That's for. I saw something about switching. Or concentration. <laughs> Was it concentration traps? Mm -hmm. Yes. Concentration traps. Mm hmm. Re their re-education facilities, they are literally just shipping people off. It's like, we're just letting this happen? We know what's happening. Can we, can we tell them to stop, please? Always has been. This isn't right. Why are we still trading with them? Tell that to the kids in cages at the border. Holy shit. Fuck. All right, look, man. I don't like that either. It doesn't mean... But I can't not like this. <laughs> no, I mean, it's not great. I'm just saying, like, that's a situation that we totally have control over. We don't have control Ish. over what... Well, I'm saying, like, we could elect to just be like, let's not do that. But, like, we can't just say, hey, China, stop doing that, or else things are gonna, you know, be really bad for you. They're gonna be like, oh, yeah, round eye? And what the fuck are you gonna do about it? Well, yeah, that's, that's what China always does, China. though. Like, over the last, like, yeah. every time we've come out and said something against them, they go, well, uh, you're still killing black people in the streets with your police. Or, uh, you arrest people at your borders all the time. And just, yeah, like, it's oh, like, uh, They just do that to us all the time, and it's like, It's almost like yourself. we should get our shit in order before fucking pointing the fingers at other people. Look, man. How does that go, people with glass houses? Look, man, all I'm saying uh, is... They, this they is... ships? Isn't that the... <laughs> no, they throw this Karens. This is the shit that ruins the world. You shouldn't throw saying. Karens. People, yeah, people, people that live in glass shouldn't houses throw shouldn't throw Karens. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> no. No, what you do to Karens is you, you lock them in a room and let them oh. yell at a mirror or something for a while. And you just kind of ignore them. You know, just leave them alone. No, it's not. We have to spare a whole room. Can't be Karens. <laughs> you can you can get all you can round up a bunch of Karens and they'll just be Karens together. It'll be fine. It'll be all right. You don't need to worry about it. Make me wonder, Dante. What? Yeah, this sounds like a bad plan. <laughs> sounds like me. It just sounds like me, like two yeah. steps away from a concentration camp for Karens. You're getting a lot That's of Karens so together and just stuffing them into somewhere. That's getting on the Karen creeper territory. Camps. No, you can't. What's my this? white fragility. I'm just, you know, I'm just inching uh, my way closer and closer to concentration camps for Karen. <laughs> and I'm first still somehow off a couple bored. Rooms, then I'm just getting a bunch of them together in one place, and I realize I have a lot of them, so I build a facility to house them. <laughs> I realize the facility said can't indefinitely I support them, Karen. so I have to come up with a means to remove <laughs> them from the <laughs> facility over time. <laughs> I think you just won with that one there, Bert. Hey, what did he say? Go. I missed it because I was talking. I said, at first I said nothing, for I was not a Karen. <laughs> God damn it. Yo. Hey, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Ladies and gentlemen, Look, man, this is just a general reminder that we are saying. currently at Advancement 18. I don't want any so, more yeah. advancements. Games I don't know spoon. what to do with these advancements. How, how did you all not die yet? 
how do how do I hold all these advancements? X tried. <laughs> he really tried. Someone make it. Honestly, make lemon I blame me quick, doing a hurry. lot of stupid shit that somehow worked out. Quick now, invest in the meme. Hmm. There's a the, guy uh, in power armor. Any rational party? Hey, let's let's not and just walk away from this. The robot. We're going to DDT Sunday. <laughs> Fucking the robot. Top rope action! Slaps his elbow. Breaks his elbow. Fucking two runs later. Tag in! Tag in! Good, good, good. <laughs> Literally being shot by seven people, come on. Just be a man. Just an old man and just fisticuff anyone you come in contact with. You say that like my character's gonna live to the age no, of no, 50. No, no, no. We've, we've, we found out why everyone wanted to punch him in the first place. It's, it's because... He's ugly. They saw one guy get a promotion. Fuck Prasikovic. Like, yo, is that how we get promotions? <laughs> Fuck Prasikovic. You just gotta punch Prasik in the face and survive? Easy, I got this. <laughs> He's just an old man. And there's a nerd with him. We got this. Wait, you didn't <laughs> tell us about the fucking seven foot tall robot that follows him around too. That was a pretty fast fucking meme there. I mean, it took like three seconds to put that one together. <laughs> Don't forget yeah, shot. Don't yeah, forget Dante have also a shotgun. Oh, Wait, so we're on eight. Oh no. That's gotta be one of the scariest pieces about you being a robot is the fact that you actually keep a basically have a kill tracker on your shotgun. <laughs> I mean, I also have an inbuilt kill tracker. No one just seems to have mentioned that part. Yeah, yeah. Or found out about it. Right, but like you don't have like a readout on your person, as far as we know, that says like this is how many people I've killed. No, he he's just keep like... he's just keeping personal tally, which is something you all could have asked him about, but haven't. Yeah, sure, but I mean, you keep that to yourself, and that's the point. But when you have the kill tracker on your shotgun as like a memento, that's a little different from just like I know how many people I've killed. I keep a lot of things to my character self, mostly because whenever he tries asking a question, half of the time people try deflecting it. Or give him non-answers. Yeah, it's probably for the best that way. <laughs> no, you guys have done a terrible job raising this robot. I'm just saying. Look, man. I was actually going to say in the dad. epilogue... I don't know you! <laughs> I was actually going to some point say in the epilogue, if we ever got to, like, someone of authority, where, like, if Hawk tried to, like, get me out of doing my community service or whatever the fuck, I would probably say... Decisions with children are probably left to your better halves. <laughs> we ever get to that point. I've been saving up a whole talent point so I could get a, a legendary level up and I could have a permanent sidekick. I mean, shit, you who could have you, two of those by you now. Make your sidekick. My wife to be the love of my life. We fight together, we die together. Mr. Prasic? Nice. Dumo. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Y'all forgot he existed, didn't you? <laughs> but I did. That's a beautifully horrible idea. I love it. <laughs> All right, let's play the scene. Uh, let's see here. Uh, it's uh, the year uh, 1950, and uh, gay marriage is finally legalized <laughs> in Grider Dam. Damn, man. Grider Dam is progressive. Good for them, fuck. man. You know, yeah, brother. Thinking ahead. Good for Mr. Them. Dumont, Mr. A Dr. Axel, Dr. Captain Axel, <laughs> Dr. Captain Daddy Axel, holding hands, long, lovingly gazing into one another's eyes. Dearly eyes beloved. <laughs> I do, Dr. Daddy. Uh -huh. Captain Dr. Daddy. <laughs> That's the whole thing every time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah but out. Captain Dr. Daddy, I feel like, doesn't roll off the tongue quite as well. All right. So, <clears throat> following the events of last session, um, you guys have seized the New Dawn, uh, which is truly a turning point in the war, for, uh, in the war effort. Um, immediately after you've, like, managed to wrest, like, the uh, controls away from the Russians... Uh, you begin employing the weapons systems on the uh, the new dawn, cannons lighting up the uh, the surrounding borough of Ilikoven relatively indiscriminately, uh, firing on enemy 
<clears throat> enemy positions. Um, the Ruslanders, within like less than an hour of uh, the New Dawn turning on them, have uh, essentially uh, signaled a full retreat. Uh, they're pulling out of the borough. Um, this would be only, of course, the first theater that the New Dawn would visit uh, in the time after uh, <clears throat> the events of the taking of the New Dawn. Uh, but as pretty much per Illichoven, every one of the Russian fronts crumples when the Mega Zeppelin enters the theater. <clears throat> Mechanized units are entirely too large uh, to avoid um, the weapon systems ab aboard the New Dawn. Making it, uh, making them almost useless. It finds that uh, infantry are actually safer, leading to desolate battlefields of empty uh, diesel mechs that have been abandoned, trying to retreat from points all around the uh, the conflict zones. Uh, UKE troops, as as well as uh, the USV troops, uh, roll in and basically just take free uh, Russian diesel mechs. Not having a hard counter for the New Dawn, um, the Russian armies are essentially uh, more or less um, rendered useless uh, as infantry alone is not enough to stand up against the uh, mechanized forces of now the Allied uh, uh, coalition. Uh, you guys personally, having uh, like taken the new dawn before you end up hand, handing it over um you can see uh what looks like russian cavalry excuse me not russian cavalry uh uh gna cavalry uh sweeping the plains of uh illicoven heading and like moving around in the forest and whatnot as you guys are picking and choosing targets your mechanized infantrymen being quite uh skilled gunners excuse me being quite skilled gunners, they're able to uh, pick out the uh, Ruslanders' assets and destroy them with almost surgical precision. Um, you get to watch as formations of the uh, Greiterdam 1st uh, Cavalry employing their lances to take down uh, what few uh, diesel mechs are still uh, like operational um, or deemed too close in contact to uh, fire at. But for the remainder of the afternoons, uh, or I should say for about most of the day, uh, the new dawn fires at positions uh, all around Illicoven. Um, you guys get to see as the first um, like infantrymen start making their way into the camp down below. And at this point, um, you guys are free to like, uh, you can take planes down to the theaters if you want, or down to the... Uh, the camps if you want or meet up with uh enemy forces or ah, fucking my brain is totally scattered today <clears throat> um you can meet up with uh, the allied forces if you like um that's entirely up to you but go ahead have we actually taken back this area or is like by the end of the day there's no no doubt about it russian forces are in full retreat and they're uh out of the ao it's uh somewhat cumbersome to uh go back and forth uh, between the um the new dawn and the ground uh as you have to use biplanes um you know to go up and down uh or take the c senora off uh as well um <clears throat> so you can either just uh stay up there and play uh fucking sky captain the world beyond uh or you guys can head down but like by the time like <laughs> a late lunch happens, like the Russian forces are so already decimated, um, because this was like the entire seat of their power in the region. Um, knowing even further than that, in this uh, theater in, in particular, um, the inability for the uh, Ruslan mechs to charge in the evenings. Uh, means that by the next day they will not have a diesel mech force this of course is not a drawback that the uh the greater dammers um like played into they went for full diesel tech didn't have any of the cool tesla punk shit 
but it keeps uh, the Jaegers in operation 24-7. So, uh, Dr. Prasik, you want to head down to the camp, right? Yes. We want to see if we can find your brother and mm -hmm. his wife. Mm -hmm. That's important. That's like literally the one thing I've came out here to do. Right. So, um, is there anything we need to keep in mind, um, Dr. Captain, before we uh, head head down to the uh, work camp? I don't think there's anything to keep in mind except take your time and secure all your forces in case there's still resistance somewhere. Make sure you don't get, uh, you know, spooked on. Um, so then should we take a detachment down in the uh si senora or the secure landing zone would probably be yeah. a pretty good idea okay the uh the lieutenant uh lieutenant van brommer your uh, platoon leader says uh sir if you want to go down with them we can keep this all uh, in order up here mm. <clears throat> though i do advise that you take some of the uh uh Ruslan pow's down to the camp and actually uh, probably turn them idea. into the army so that they don't remain on on deck here I think also need to probably go ahead and get the wounded men that are still on board, but uh, put down on solid ground and see about pushing them to the closest hospital. All right, let's load everyone up. Um, your uh, lieutenant, the medic of the group, uh, Lieutenant Bull, says, uh, Sir, I also suggest that we bring the uh, C-Senora just down to the front lines in general. We've got a pretty much functioning hospital that could be brought straight up to the main line. That would probably be a good idea as well. All right, load everybody that's wounded or in any kind of uh, less than 100% fighting POWs? status. POWs and anybody else who needs to get a ride down to the ground. I'll leave uh, the dressing. It was a loot. No, it was a lieutenant below me, right? That was going to pilot this down. Yeah. Okay. I'll leave them in charge. And obviously the mech units will have to stay here because we're not loading them back up on the. Well, and also if down. there are um, any Bruce Landers that have like hit away in nooks and crannies of the ship that we weren't able to find, we need to ensure against reprisals yeah, or right. some sort of counteroffensive. Uh, Lieutenant Van Brommer says, uh, with your permission, sir, uh, I'd, I'd like to send in the third squad with you to keep an eye on those POWs until you get them down to the main army. I was going to suggest that as well. I think that'd be a good idea. I think uh, I think three mega units and two uh, special forces units can handle the, the red dawn. Should anything arise, anyway. Are we I'll, leave, yep. I'll leave you in we'll charge. We'll keep her safe, sir. Are we going to leave uh, Terminus up here to help him out? Uh, well, I guess they have translators, so Terminus should come with us. Uh, yeah, especially because we don't know what we're going to come across in with those work camps or whatever, and like if you know. He can survive in situations that we can't. And if it's what you seem to think it is, like maybe they're trying to mine Savage or whatever, like that's obviously a situation oh, yeah. that we don't want to be in. Like we can't go in there, but he can. Bring that man with us. It's on to find Terminus. Bring Terminus. Tell him to come find with him. us. Uh, <laughs> I assume Terminus you're actually all ga gathered at this point. Painting unless Terminus, Terminus specifically didn't want to be there. I probably have somewhere like like near a water barrel or however the fuck they store water up here and try to clean viscera off myself. <laughs> I'm ready to make yeah, a repair sure. check for that if you want. Sure. He just wants to show off now. Yeah, we're level 18 Let him show there. off. Oh my god, 20 on the way. You're clean as fuck. For once your balls don't stink. Thank god. <laughs> Well, only stink if you want them to. Thank you, brother. Um, yeah, so you get cleaned up, and uh, you've joined like the rest of them. They're talking about going down. Um, let's see. Excellent. We might finally get some work out of that portable field hotless where you, you had me spend two weeks on. <laughs> um... The uh, Premier Sergeant of uh, Mechanized Squad 3, um, Sergeant Major, uh, or Premier Sergeant Major, excuse me, Loden, uh, 
has uh, sent his um, his messenger from the mechanized squads up, uh, letting you guys know that uh, basically everything in the borough uh, that is of sizable like quantity, and this is by like in the afternoon, has basically been demolished, and now it's essentially just infantry. Um, <clears throat> but just an update uh, for you guys. You guys uh, gather. Uh, up the POWs and make your way back down uh, to the ground. Um, just so we don't all die here, let's get a piloting roll. Ooh. Come on, it's easy. Well, you just gotta roll it into the headwind. Come on, crit fails. And then, uh, let's, let's see what happens. Double one, double one, double one. Come on, crit fails. Rolls, double one, it, like, double it, it falls double and one. he has to like guide it back up. It's not hard. It's an easy. It's an easy. He's a good pilot. He's Dante, got this. Double one. He has a minus two. Why would I be rolling this? No, Vaught has a minus two because he's flying to see Senora. Vaught, please don't fuck it this up. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I've, I've, I've said you're a good pilot. I've don't like, worry, guys. Me. It's just collision damage. I'm going to pat you on the back and give you even another bat. Benny, take us home, Vaught. Take... <laughs> Look, man, I really need a that's a That's a fail right there. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't Benny. worry, guys. It's Obviously, just collision damage. But holy shit, that would have been so. Oh my god. Please, just three, takes no, off keep the your three bennies. Keep dying. your three bennies, buddy. I gave you one. Take us home, bot. <laughs> all right, critical fail. Everyone roll critical damage. Oh man, look at all that damage. All right, done. This is the one moment X has been saving up for the whole campaign, just waiting for it to crash when we beat all of my bennies. Just imagine all fucking first bennies. squad up there. It's like wait. How are we getting down now? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we have to wait for them to send another plane up here at some point. <laughs> right. Well, how much frankly, fuel does this thing have? We're expecting uh, the ship to get up here undamaged, so we're a little. I mean, I'm assuming they must have like biplanes with like troop. I'm assuming they must have like biplanes with like troop carrying capacity. They just need to get a pilot up here to fly. Yeah, they do. Um. Anyways, so uh, you pull off the uh, new dawn and land. Uh, securely behind uh, friendly lines uh, now that uh, essentially the Russians have been crushed in the borough of uh, like surrounding Illicoven. Um There's still going to be, of course, like protracted fights in the streets as uh, uh, there will be um, like Russian forces that are cut off from retreat and uh, some will decide to go down fighting. Others will become POWs. Um, but that's for other uh, people to deal with. The GNA will have their hands full for a little while uh, until, you know, the Russians uh, are fully out of uh, Greditum. You guys uh, disembark, uh, and by the time you guys come to a stop and are uh, disembarking from the, the vehicle with POWs uh, and uh, uh, third squad keeping an eye on them, uh, submachine guns at the ready... Um, you can see what looks like uh, a um, diesel-powered vehicle, um, not a mech, but like a, a truck, uh, making its way uh, towards you guys. <clears throat> looks to be of, uh, like, a uh, greater damage make, um, the vehicle. Kind of familiar looking. Um, as it pulls up, you can see uh, what looks like, uh, sitting in the uh, passenger seat, uh, Commandant Schmidt Prasik. And uh, <clears throat> there's a driver who you don't recognize, but judging by his uh, lieutenant sign, he's probably one of the people that works for the uh, officerial entourage. Um, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> you see uh, a face that you haven't seen in quite a while. Uh, you see uh, Sir Elko Radzeville, the militia captain from uh, Illicoven, uh, standing there uh, alongside Prasik. Uh, Schmidt walks over to uh, you, Doctor, as you're uh, walking out of the vehicle and uh, throws his arms around you. He says, you did it. You son of a bitch, you did it. You know, you know hug him back and pat him on the back. Uh, I mean, it wasn't just me. It was, I'm going to look over at third squad. It was them, really. Of course, Those of course. He uh, walks over uh, to uh, Terminus and you see him uh, Schmidt claps, claps a hand on Terminus's shoulder. 
He says, good job, Terminus. It looks like uh, your barriers and all of your innovations seem to have helped out a lot on that uh, fight up there. That is excellent to hear. Fact. However, I have yet to fulfill my promise. Your promise? My character motions his head to Prasik, who I assume still remembers the promise I made to him all of those fucking days ago. Not to get, the bro get my brother out. Yeah. Actually, that's why I'm down here. Um, I uh, found some word on the, on the New Dawn itself that I believe your uncle, um, you know, uncle is here. I forgot his name. <laughs> uncle Hakan? Ha Hakan, yes, Uncle Hakan. Jesus Christ, how did I forget his name? Prasik appears tongue-tied at the moment. I will elaborate. During our incursion into the camp, I found out information along their telecommunications wire that they had a number of prisoners upon the new dawn. Recently, we have learned that those prisoners have been moved to the base camp, which has yet to has received proper reconnaissance. He nods. He says, uh, well, we have uh, reports from uh, the first CAV that they have uh, breached the camp. We're still catching our infantry up to them uh, at the moment. But we will be there. And if Hakan is there, God willing, uh, we'll get him out. Are they going to need help? Do we? Uh, you think we need to head that way and assist in any way? Or do you have enough men to pretty much detain the camp and make sure nothing comes about. I'm not foolish enough to turn down overwhelming odds, but it seems like you have your hands full with the new Dawn. Am I incorrect in that? New Dawn has been captured. She is now under our command. I've left uh, first and second, as well as all three mechanized detachments on board to quell any kind of hiders that may be in the uh, dark catacombs of that large ship. Uh, we're just down here to secure any kind of intel that you may need going forward from it and get some of these wounded men and POWs into uh, some form of a safe, secure facility for each one, respectively, obviously. I see. Yeah, um, we'll have the uh, POWs uh, dealt with here very shortly. Um, <clears throat> I just need to roll, uh, go back to my unit and uh, send some guys over to take custody of them from you. Uh, it shouldn't take very long. I'll keep them on board the uh, Si Senora until somebody uh, makes their way over there. We're probably going to need your uh, hospital unit somewhere near the camp. So uh, if you can get them on the move over that way, it would be appreciated. Well, Terminus, sounds like you're going to get a little use on that thing after all, huh? I still don't know what a gold better is for. Maybe By I'll learn what back. it is. My hand now is beating red and hot because I slapped a hard piece of metal. <laughs> Cartoonish fucking thumping. <laughs> uh, Vod, are you going to leave your ship parked here, or do you plan to move over to some other destination? I don't know if you're going to have a good landing zone near the camp. I haven't scouted it myself. I don't think I did. No, I mean, I... I... I mean, of course, number one is getting the POWs off the off the plane, and so once they're off, then we can. I can. Take It'll be the easiest ship for wherever. us to disembark them here. Yeah, but afterwards, I can take the ship wherever you need to go. Well, I mean, but I don't. Th I, but I mean, I didn't get a great look at the camp either. You know, on account of the fact that we were trying to take back the New Dawn. Well, if they're yeah. assaulting now, I think the best thing would be for at least me and Terminus to make our way that way, and um, along with the medical team, and then leave the third uh, third squad here to maintain security for prisoners, as well as keeping you safe. Dr. Prasik, you're welcome to join, or you may go with your son and assist him in anything he may need at this point forward. I just want to get to the camp at this point and see if Akan is still alive and oh. if anyone else we know is in there. Well, then let's let's go. But right? Do you have I any mean... form of uh, transport that we could uh, utilize to get to the camp somewhat quickly? I hate to he take says, your vehicle, but... Well, I mean, we have, uh, we have some trucks. 
I just came out here when I saw the senior C Senora landing. Ah, uh, okay. okay. I can send perfect. over actual uh, troop transport if you need. Yes, please. That would be uh, would be sufficient enough to get us there. I want to be able to at least tend to uh, both those that are going to be wounded and those that have been there for quite some time. Most likely going to be malnourished and probably dehydrated and who knows what else these Russians have done to them. You see him uh, look over to the lieutenant that's with him, or he says, uh, Lieutenant, uh, would you uh, please go back to the unit and bring back a couple of lorries for us to uh, get to the uh, get to the camp in? He says, uh, right away, Commandant. He uh, immediately uh, gets back in the vehicle, and you see him head off on his own. Schmidt stays here and uh, walks over, kind of looking at the passengers as third squad begins to disembark them uh, at this location. He says, uh, I trust uh, I trust everything went pretty smoothly there. Uh, did you have any hiccups? Uh, there was a few instances where it looked somewhat, um, somewhat shaky, I would guess I would say. Uh, turns out their commander was... Not a, uh, incompetent. Yeah, <laughs> he was not completely incompetent, uh, but he definitely started to lose his morale quite quickly when first when our uh, Jaeger units took over the uh, one of two airstrips and completely neutralized any mechanical uh, strength that they might have had. <laughs> after. And from what I hear, Terminus was a uh, pretty pretty influential role in that. So. Certainly no complaints from me. And then after that, first, second, third, special force move down in down into the belly of the beast, neutralize contact. We got some information that uh, kept a lot of our boys safe very quickly. Dr. Prasic came up with some quick thinking. So really everybody had a good hand in making sure it all came together masterfully. We've you, uh, as you guys are nearing the sea Senora again from where the, the, uh, uh, lorry or the truck took off um <clears throat> you can see um uh you can see miss shriver uh coming out with uh, some of the pow's as well as third squad and uh she yells back into the cargo hold hey Vot. uh yeah you coming out here am i still in the ship Oh, I thought you were. I like look around. I like check myself. I'm like, what? <laughs> uh, there, all right, there's there's a lag spike. Actually, he was in the ship and he just teleports outside. <laughs> what <in> tarnation? <laughs> rubber banding. That cyberpunk thing where you climb out the window and fly 200, 200 yards away. <laughs> oh my yeah, god, that happened. That happened I was today. like so confused. I was like, why? <laughs> oh, I know. It's a See bug. you, space cowboy. <laughs> Hilarious. Just woo. Oh, uh, oh, so for, I'm actually walking out, uh, walking down like the the plank right now, and I'm like uh, mixing a, I'm like holding a drink, I'm like holding a cocktail. I'm like, oh, I had to run back in and celebrate you know, essentials. <laughs> yeah, Shriver comes out uh, with him. Uh, she's got a glass waiting for uh, her turn at the bottle. He, uh, she looks over at uh, the group of you guys, and she says. Uh, I didn't think we were going to be able to get him out of that suit. I mean, eventually. I think it's heavy. <laughs> I have to say that suit was pretty. Uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty uh, clutch when it yeah. came to actually cleaning out some of those heavily infested areas. He just walked forward and basically let them shoot until they ran out of ammo, and then pulverized them. So going forward. We might want to consider if Gratidem makes any new technology of our own that we might want to consider building counters to it ourselves, just in case something like that happens. It seems like they had no apparent reason to believe that we couldn't just capture their technology and use it against them. Well, I mean, realistically, the issue is, you know, small arms fire can't do anything to that. But obviously, much larger weaponry that a Jaeger would use would have just, you know liquefied my internals so i think that's how kind of how oh, you, you think would they would have effective that. means to combat it like they would know its weaknesses and understand like this I'm, is how we're well, supposed I mean, to fight someone in this thing 
but that's why you know I, we were going deck by deck. I wasn't trying to stand up to a to a um, a diesel mech by myself. There was that one guy with the twenty millimeter you know? cannon pointed at the door. <laughs> it's a forty wait. millimeter. Wait, what? Well, yeah, there was that one guy though. <laughs> yeah, that was the first guy you killed. The guy that could have killed oh, you died very oh, quickly. Time, so yeah. could have killed you. No, they I'm sorry. I, I thought you meant that there was like a diesel mech that was like gonna shred. No, through no, they the, they pointed the they, deck. Don't we were you remember? Through. Yeah, it was, it was in the mechanic the last shop. room. There was a guy with a forty millimeter uh, cannon pointing at the door. Uh, I'm pretty sure I was just running on adrenaline and oh, yeah, cigarettes, so I I can't. Yeah, no, I've, I don't remember happens. about half of what happened. Popping heads yeah. and getting shreds. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Indeed. Well said, Doctor Axel. <laughs> Hi, yeah, brother. Hi, yeah. A short time later, a few lorries pull up, one of which to uh, move POWs back to the main uh, like uh, area that the GNA is putting POWs, and the other is to bring you and First Squad uh, to the camp. Um, by the time you guys see the camp uh, coming over the hill, like there's no real roads up there, so the lorry has kind of a hard time. Um, but <clears throat> making your way up uh, into the, the area of the camp, you can see that... Uh, it looks to be like a large strip mining operation. Um, like it's got a, a sizable quarry. Um, <clears throat> you can see also that uh, there are um, like quite a few of the workers have been liberated. And the it's basically the uh, the tables have turned is now the, the people of Illicoven are wielding submachine guns and uh, taking POWs, you know. Um, X. Can I roll common knowledge based on the fact that um my I've I've probably done more like over the years through like mining and stuff like that. We've probably taken samples of rocks from different areas and just mm -hmm. do, would I know like that does this place have anything worthwhile at all? Like what, what could they be mining out of the out of the rocks here if they're just straight up strip mining it? Uh go ahead and make a science roll. Geology is a science. If he lets us know we're doing this, I could assist. I think he's just kind of like surveying the area. Just spend one to re-roll. Wait, why are you neg one? Are you still hurt? I'm probably still hurt, yeah. Oh. I don't know why it's... Man, it is rolling poorly. Alright, so... It shouldn't uh, have rolled You got my dice today. Uh, so four, I guess, yeah. Would be the best one there. I guess I'll assist. It's fine. I just take the four. Oh. Um, looking at it uh, in this area, you have done geological studies uh, in this area, or I should say uh, funded geological studies. And all of the signs um, for the, um, <clears throat> the Sentinel Mountains, at least in this area, is that, I mean, you could probably do all right with an iron mining operation. Um, but for the large part, uh, precious metals wouldn't be what they were mining here. Um, <clears throat> though, I mean, obviously, when you go out and you start taking, like, samples, uh, like ground samples and whatnot, um, you're not... It's not like you hit everything in the range, right? No, but you're uh, just, you're just... as you're, like, bouncing along in the lorry as it's, like, coming over the hill, you can see this mining operation, and, like, maybe if they were trying to build something, like, uh, out of stone would be the, the type of um, like operation that would be going on here, uh, but that's not likely considering that it looks like, uh, just from the layout of the quarry that a lot of the stone is just being displaced. Like they're digging, uh, uh for something specific, um, making your way into the camp. Um, <clears throat> you can see that, uh, some of the prisoners are, uh, like many of them are worked incredibly hard like down to the bone pretty much. It's not quite like a Jewish concentration camp level of uh, like mishandling. Uh, however, um, they do look malnourished um, and like overworked. Um, but Dr. Axel, specifically, you start to notice that uh, the people that are coming from inside the mines at this point um, are uh, coming out and they're 
not only do they look malnourished, but uh, they seem to be like missing hair. Some of them have teeth that have fallen out. Oh, Ooh, pretty bad. And uh, by the time you get into the camp proper and like you're basically rubbing elbows with the the new POWs, I guess the Russian POWs, uh, who were, you know, just hours before the gu the guards of the place. Um, you can see that uh, there are signs of, and uh, Dr. Prasik, you recognize it as well, there are signs of radiation po poisoning uh, amongst uh, a lot of the uh, people that have been working the quarry. Excuse me, I need a drink of water there. Um, anyways, uh, <laughs> They not knowing that their life is uh, generally over. pretty much over, <laughs> yeah, um, are just happy to be freed for the moment. It'll uh, you decide to leave it to somebody else to uh, explain their situation to them, but it becomes pretty obvious that they have found uh, in the burrow uh, another supply of Savage. How much of it has gone out? Well, that's not really. Uh, they straight I mean, up strip mine the location, so they're probably like trying to dig it all out at this point. Yep, trying they're to looking for as much of it as it can. Yep, some of it may have been uh, sent back to Russia, um, you know. Uh, but there are samples that you guys find as you go through the labs and whatnot um, that are of this, like. It seems to be another element, like really, not the same Savage that you've seen, um, but it seems to be a much more um, volatile version of it. In fact, uh, your guess when looking at the Savage that was enriched <clears throat> is that the 30 times more powerful version is this other material that has been enriched. Uh, typical Savage does not uh, hold this level of like uh, uh, instability. There's evidence from the minds of uh, um, like lots of people having died down here uh, uh, from like teeth laying around to clumps of hair and uh, eventually you find your way to a mass grave. Um, thankfully, uh, <laughs> there's nobody that you see uh, in the mass grave that you recognize. But you do question if you would even recognize them at this point, uh, if they were exposed to that much radiation. Uh, it's at this point that um, Mr. Dumont comes crawling out of the mass grave. <laughs> He's like, I just live down there, guys. <laughs> this is really bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was cr that was a crazy time. We were just like blowing up buildings, and then like all of a sudden, I was living underground again. It was weird. <laughs> this really seems like something you would do. So so anyway, how are you guys? I weigh two hundred pounds more. Oh, that's <laughs> no, that's good, man. Disappointing, bud. Go on diet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, within the hour, you guys uh, managed to find out that uh, essentially uh, Hakan has been kept down here in the mines, not as a worker, but essentially as someone who knows a lot about mining. Like he's like the, the site foreman, essentially. They put him to work like tasking uh, people, the people of Illicoven to uh, uh, do as much work as possible and keep him, having him uh, essentially keep it all running. Um, Hakan lets you know that they've been uh, essentially taking um, the uh, different Savage off to another site for um, like enrichment. And they have a streamlined enrichment process that works uh, largely on some of the stolen research from a uh, <coughs> a Dr. Brower person of, uh, whom he's had some contact with in the past. I let him know that, you know, I've met Dr. Brower after, oh, well, you know, I catch him up that, you know, I've been staying in his house for like the last couple of weeks and 
yeah. up until now. It's like, you know, after a hug and I sit him down and we get, I have a, you know, Dumont, sorry, not Dumont. I have a, a Vought pour him a drink as well. Uh, oh, Catch yeah, I'm up. just walking around with the bottle. <laughs> just like, give this man a drink. Just <laughs> trailer park poisoning it. it I might oh, as well. Yes. I did my work for the day. Oh, yes. <laughs> I've, I've been already paid. clocked out. I've had this Come bottle on. of scotch. Come on, quick down that C4. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, I catch him up on everything that's happened and that, like, I'm glad to see that he's alive and so, I mean, for as morbid as it sounds, that he's doing well. <laughs> he, uh, tells you, well, he breaks the news to you that, uh, his daughter Tabitha didn't make it, uh, unfortunately. Oh, not Tabitha. Uh, I like Tabitha. I had a whole bunch of Christmas presents lined up for Tabitha. A little bit. Oof. Damn. No, um, unfortunately, um, she didn't make it through the camp. Oh, no. She died of exposure uh, probably two weeks ago. Console him. Yeah, he's... Should we, we were here two weeks ago. We should have just busted in and saved you. Having known him for as long as you have, obviously, you can tell that he's just barely keeping himself together. Like, he looks disheveled and fucked up, you know, Um only the hope of like even returning to the rest of his family, who you find out he uh, sent to Vinland uh, when the war broke out. Um, <clears throat> he sent the, re the rest of his uh, children and his wife to Vinland to stay um, while he managed stuff here. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, anyways, um, so yeah, yeah, he breaks the news to you, and uh, you guys suffer in pain for a moment uh a bunch of you like a bunch of the people in the area are just like god damn man but yeah. it turns the move the mood uh immediately grim um he tells you that uh essentially uh the resistance in the area has been continuing like terrorist activities in the area and that uh he was brought in once before uh, the captain to uh, try and identify some of them. But luckily, uh, in spite of torture and his uh, lack of knowledge of the citizens of Illicoven, uh really is what kept him from turn ratting on anybody. Uh, he suspects that there's uh, someone by the name of uh, Lupardi, who you know, um, who has been uh, operating in the area as like that de facto resistance leader. That's good to um, hear. <laughs> she was found a while ago, um, like as a member of the resistance and had to essentially like go underground, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, but she had been working alongside with uh, <clears throat> your former butler, maybe once again, uh, Mr. Bradsby. Hell yeah. Uh, who was helping to organize the, uh, the resistance in the area as well. Um, they tell you that... Uh, he tells you that uh, from what he's heard, um, there is a or there was a man by the name of Mr. Dumont who was uh, uh, Captain Mishkin's like arch nemesis, who uh, died in a terrorist attack uh, <laughs> or a freedom fighters attack. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Allegedly, right? Uh, but he lot. tells you. He tells you that he's seen firsthand a lot of the Russian disinformation, so there's really no telling if uh, Mr. Dumont is alive or dead. I'm, I'm thinking if they're saying he's dead, he probably was dead because there's no, there's no reason to tell us he's dead or to spread information like that when they want him alive for Michigan himself. Unless they're just tired of being here. Therefore, they just tell him that... Uh, <laughs> just we telling Michigan he's dead? Can we, we leave got him. now? <laughs> we, got, we got him, boss. We can go home. He he, that that idiot blew himself up. Can you guys leave now? Can we leave now? Look, I don't want to get fucking face smashed by a fucking seven foot tall robot. <laughs> um, after liberating the um, Savage mine, um, you guys that evening by twilight are uh, moving alongside the uh, uh, the Greater Dam Infantry uh, under uh, Commandant Prasix. Uh, leadership and as you guys uh, make your uh, walk into Illicoven uh, accompanied by Jaegers and uh, 
other things like uh, USV tanks have uh, rolled in. Um, you can see that there is a large like group of people on the main like MSR, um, the trade route out of the city. Um, and they are standing there under a white flag. There's a bunch of Russians who have uh, basically given up after the fucking shellacking that the new Don just handed out all over the fucking the county. <laughs> and you guys are over are able to walk up and you see uh, like soldiers immediately um, like taking them into custody, the, the Ruslanders who've uh, decided to surrender. You see a large pile of weapons. Uh, laying off to the side uh, <clears throat> and it's the first of many good sights in Illicoven that you've seen uh, for quite a while um, on a scale of one to completely decimated how fucked up is Illicoven Illicoven is very fucked up um, <clears throat> years there, this back in order. yeah it's there's a lot of work that's gonna have to go on here um uh, Illicoven really got fucked up when the resistance started going, like, uh, making much more, like, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, overt actions against the uh, Russian army. The Russians, of course, uh, not knowing exactly how to deal with the resistance, um, ended up, like, blowing up buildings, uh, you know, that they suspected, you know, the... Uh, the resistance might be using is uh, safe uh, safe hold houses. Excuse me. Um, the theaters buildings. then we blame it on the resistance. Easy. Yep. The uh, the theaters gone. The candlelight theater. Um, <clears throat> even the sewers have been raided at this point. You know. Um, and judging by a huge pothole. Uh, I mean, I shouldn't even say pothole. Uh, a huge crater uh, just on the west side excuse me, of the main foyer outside the manor, the hospital. It looks like uh, one of Mr. Dumont's explosives uh, probably got a bunch of Russians. Um, but at some point, uh, it stopped being about, like, let's try and make this, you know, all on the nice, and it became warfare against the citizens of Illicoven. Uh, many atrocities have been, uh, like, will essentially be uh, reported after uh, you know the main offensive is done <clears throat> where is that page well, in, in going through this I'm gonna you know considering the manor is gone you know we asked about uh, hmm, what's her name Again, Marsman if anyone's heard from her or seen her I meant the sorry I meant the southeast uh, side of uh, Illicoven uh, this area all under the, uh, the pub here is all like blown up <laughs> where you guys set those traps. Yeah. The main lines coming in through the, to the areas that we occupied at the time. But yeah, seeing that and seeing the manor gone, you know, I kind of asked about Janaki Marsman, if anyone's heard from her or seen her anywhere, if she was on... And I even asked my brother guys, if like, she was on any lists of people that were at the camps. Uh, Hakan doesn't know anything really about uh, Miss Marsman. Um, however, that evening, um, when it's obvious that the Russian forces have been defeated in the area, um, a bunch of people on horseback uh, come riding out of the woods from the north. Um, <clears throat> and uh, at the head of the uh, procession is Miss Lupardi, uh, who has come in. Um, Behind her, you see uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bradsby, and uh, with him is uh, Miss Marsman. Ah, heck yeah, brother! When I give, when I she uh, give... dismounts, Miss Marsman dismounts her horse and uh, runs over to uh, uh, Doctor Axel. Out of my way, Prasic. Just want to run over uh, Brad's view and jump like into the, his arms. It, it's literally just... <laughs> it's like the uh, the running in the, the daisy fields at each other kind of thing. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> she throws her arms around you and says, They told me that you were dead. Can't kill Apparently. Him, he's not ready to die. <laughs> Russian propaganda has basically been... I mean, the, the general 
playbook is to demoralize, you know, by any means necessary. Of course, anybody with a loved one uh, under Russian occupation was told that that person was dead, most likely, just to squander any or squash out any hope. Any of My character would probably, point. like, loudly muse, like, has, has Captain Axel even been shot yet? Uh, as a matter of fact, yes. Captain Axel. Uh, well, <laughs> unfortunately, that, that, I didn't uh, quite die. Captain Doctor. Uh, well, yeah, there's a lot of stuff we have to catch up on, but let's uh, let's enjoy it. We're all here. We're alive. We have our city back. Vought, bring the bottle. Uh, uh, Doctor Prasik, another one. You recognize some of these horses? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> bring the bottle. Rip the bring an extra bottle. Bradsby, <laughs> yeah. it's Get nice to here, see man. you again, Luparty. Yeah, Bradsby dis dismounts and. Uh, he uh, comes over, right, offers you his hand. Uh, take his hand back, pull him in for a hug. Like He says, uh, who's your newfound friend? He oh, says this to is you, Vought? Dr. He's a Vinlander? He's an excellent no, I, pilot? No, I mean and... the, the machine. Oh, oh no, this is Dash 2. I, he, he now goes by Terminus. Actually, speaking of which, is Zen Dink with you guys? Have you seen him? Oh, well, yeah, he's... where's your dad? He's back in the woods. We didn't bring everyone out. We wanted to make sure that Good. Uh, Good. this was all on the up and up. But it looks like from the familiar faces around here. Uh, pouring him a drink and handing it to him. And he's yeah, well. He, he uh, just like absentmindedly like takes the glass from your hand as he's like looking out over the dev devastation of the city. It looks like you're all in the market for an engineer. Hey, Brad's mate. He nods. He says there's going to be a lot of work that's needed to be done around here. Well, I'll see you, Dash. After some work, I'll happen to be available. I guess Terminus now. Interesting. Um, <clears throat> but I know that there's some more of those Russian bastards in the city. You, uh, actually, you guys can hear, like, sporadic fighting. He says, uh, I think... Uh, one more evening in the war effort uh, wouldn't hurt anybody. <laughs> he looks over at Lupardi. Lupardi, who uh, did acknowledge your uh, your your hailing, I guess, soon. Um, I just was talking over it at the time. She says, uh, she says, uh, and who might you be? Oh, no. Wait, what? He's talking, he's, he's to, Terminus. talking to Terminus. Oh, Terminus, okay. I am Terminus Zandink, formerly known as XKY 47 2. Hmm, another one? Oh, you the used one. to be Dash. Uh, Correct. I see, I see. Well, Mostly the same one. I mean, I can't be 100% sure, but he seems on the up and up. What do you think about his upgrades? I have to say, I like them. Or some that you can't see. You would oh, be the boy. first. Does he say that with a wink? Slaps, <laughs> slaps hand on the hood. This baby can fit a lot. <laughs> yes. I feel like that was said with a wink for some reason. Slaps him on the back. Suddenly every compartment opens up like Bender. You look more like you're uh, ready for war. Puberty hit me like 400 pounds of metal, you could say. Well said. Um, Mr. Bradsby, uh, in the midst of this, uh, looks like he's ready to take the resistance into the city. And uh, if for nothing more than symbolism, uh, walk back into what is now uh, the resistance's Illicoven. Well, if, uh, if we're taking back our city, I suppose we can all, uh, we can all get together and take it back and maybe we'll all... Uh, Maybe we'll all have a drink on our way in. Uh, don't get Ms. shot and killed on the last day. Oh, hey. Miss yeah, Marsman says, I cannot wait for a shower. Oh, yeah, y'all have been hiding in the woods, huh? Well, let's go find, uh... Weeks, how about we... <laughs> Mr. Axel. Well, if it makes you feel better, I haven't had the privileges of a lot of things either. 
but <laughs> Ms. Schreiber kind of like is like hmm. Definitely haven't been in your position though. I uh, I definitely feel for you. We've been slumming it in Hakan's mansion, says Shriver. <laughs> well, we got a. There's. You've been uh, slumming There's a it. shower on the plane. I'm gonna look at it. And say <laughs> some of us actually do work now and then instead of lounge around all day. You all Shriver keep using that word. And Shriver say looks a query. at Vought. I'm gonna have like a little at Vought and uh, looks a little bit uh, insulted. What do you mean I'm we have, I'm just I'm lounge around all like day? A, with like a little gonna... cheeky grin, like not okay. being. I'm just thinking Bradley no, I... off to the side to show off the wayside rifle with them, like burn something with it. I take the bottle and glass back from uh, Dr. Axel. <laughs> That's enough. It's enough out of you. My character just like idly muses aloud. You keep you all keep using that word and now I have a query. What is a shower? Uh it's a water dispenser for uh... flesh. It's a water dispenser that's used to help clean yourself, right? Like Imagine the same how... way that you get like oil and grease yeah, on like... your person. Like we get oil and dirt and stuff on ourselves, and it's a. It's what you use the tub in the bathroom at Hakan's place for. Well, maybe not you. Maybe not. Yeah, maybe not you. Well, no, but that's I a think bathtub. You made that's not a I would shower. recommend that you do not use it as you'd probably crack it. <laughs> Wait, I've been using a high-speed power buffer. Have I been doing it wrong? No, no, it's probably, probably doing it right for you. Well, that's right for you. Yeah, but we can't really power buff our skin off, so we use. Not with that attitude. Water. Oh. Yeah, man, you got it. Yeah, nice. So, uh, since he's already hyped up. Yeah, yeah, we got it. Yeah. Uh, I like uh, it. Let's get out of here. Uncomfortable laughter. <laughs> 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 you guys, uh. Make your way that evening uh, into the city. Um, are we you can about see to that activate... the GNA is. Go ahead. I was going to say, are we about to activate ourselves into the city to start falling? To start falling? To start fighting, sorry. Oh. Um, well, most of it is It's purely, I should say, it's mostly symbolic at this point. Um, there are like a few sporadic gunshots of like people that are like holed up in a house and are like, fuck you, I'm not coming out. You know, um, but largely the GNA has everything in hand by the point, by this point. Um, USB forces are, yes. <laughs> Every now and then you like look in the direction as you hear a shot ring out. Um, <clears throat> but the, uh, the USV has had um, plenty of time since this morning because their whole attack was come through the, uh, uh, the woods from the south, from the Zilver Mines. Uh, they came in with Jaeger support, and their first target was to hit the city. So they've been, like, hit the hardest, and uh, there you go. Uh, they've been hit the hardest, um, and they've done the most work here in Illicove. And by the time Prasic's infantry comes up um, with uh, uh, militia support, the USV has most of Illicove uh, already, like, dealt with. And then throw on top of that the first cav coming in. You know, and it's just yep. There it <laughs> yeah. is. Boink, bop, boop. Um, but yeah, uh, that evening, as uh, you guys are strolling through the streets of what is now your Illicoven again, um, you guys have a certain amount of pride. You know, um, this place was your home, and they did their damnedest to take it. At one point, it looks like they had it, but the resistance never left here, and. They're returning above ground as the last rays of uh, sunlight are leaving the burrow. Uh, the resistance fighters are dancing in the street. Um, USV troops are out there. Uh, everybody's like smoking cigs and in a generally fucking uh, like jovial attitude, with the exception of, of course, uh, the Russian POWs, the Ruslan POWs. It is, is a night for could, celebration. Dumont? No. Dumont would never be seen or heard from again. Damn. <laughs> he dead, <laughs> dog. He gone. They, uh, they still say that he's, uh, he's on a one-man crusade to take out uh, Emperor Romanov. <laughs> but we have no idea. At any rate, um, the city is yours, and uh, 
in the days following the events of the retaking of uh, Illicoven, a lot of reconstruction is uh, started, um, but the war isn't completely over. Um, the entire battlefield of uh, Greiterdam has ceased to be the front, and the Ruslanders have had to fall back. In fact, even their presence in uh, in uh, fucking Negrand is minimal as they're like pulling out, and it looks like they're trying to essentially fall back on Stalkreitzung um, as their uh, main uh, like defensive point. <clears throat> but with the loss of the Mega Zeppelin, um, the fronts in um, let me switch the map real quick. Not the right one. Yeah, the fronts down in Rosendahl and Broniger fall uh, almost immediately. Broniger is the next place that the uh, the uh, new dawn would eventually show up in the following days. Go ahead. That uh, that the that the one spy, what's his name, Zadrik or whatever he was called, talked Stunning. up like. Stark, yeah, he uh, he talked up them having like fucking multiple zeppelins and all this other shit, and, but <laughs> seeing the scribes is like that. You Dawn was the only one they had, and they fucked up the lost. Well, Likely I mean, in other might. theaters. <laughs> yeah, I mean they might, but they're not willing to give up the. Oh yeah, they're they're the doing roost, the smart thing, and right? they're like now they're doing the smart thing, and they're pulling back all the zeppelins, and they're like, yeah, we're not gonna lose any more of these things. <laughs> uh, by the way, right. Dr. Prasic, um, when. We deliver the news, or I suppose this goes to Dr. Axel. Uh, when we deliver the news about the new dawn, I think we should, or you should, uh, probably put the best foot forward by also saying that not only have we captured it, but we've rechristened it and name it after the royal family. I think that probably will just be the cherry on top to whatever goodwill you have over there. Hmm. What's a thought to be? What's a thought? I, uh, or we could be pretentious and just name it the Crimson Lion. No, no, don't do that. Don't I don't like do that. that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be like a that'd be a kick in the dick for them, honestly. Oh the yeah, we captured like, this. Ah, we captured you. this big old blimp thing. We're gonna name it the Crimson Lion, though. A oh, fucking terrorist fuck. organization that's been a thorn in their side for like... That the is the Black Lions. We already oh. painted it, by the way. It's on the side. Big letters. Can't miss yeah. it. If we turn it sideways, it's now the Belgian flag. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, the the rage continues on, though the focus of it is no longer greater Dam. The ra the uh, war would go on for probably another year before uh, Russian forces are ultimately defeated. The uh, in the uh, months after, I should say, the like month or two after uh, uh, the complete reshift of the front, uh, it comes out that the uh, royal family, um, being uh, uh, the Knight Commander, what the fuck is his name? Where is his document? Fine, I get it open. Wolfrey Crowther. Okay, yeah. yeah. Wolfrey Crowford. That's him, yep. Yeah. <clears throat> the Knight Commander uh, dies in the theater of, uh, of uh, Rosendahl, uh, but is successful at uh, finding and uh, uh, essentially um, returning his daughter. He dies? Yes. What a pleb. Yeah, he's a... Uh, he sucks. He had me rolling for him. There's oh, really nothing that could be okay. done for him. Never mind, I see what happened. But uh, he managed to save his uh, uh, his daughter Astrid's life. That was actually potentially something you guys might have been uh, involved in. But since you weren't there, he's dead. <sighs> Fucking can't narrative. blame this on us. <sighs> That's just um, fate. That's just how that rolls, man. We don't, we don't, we don't, right. we don't change we that. That was definitely an option we had. We just didn't do it. 
It, it just that, it's uh, more disappointing to me that like a man of that much stature just is like blah, 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 I'm, doing I'm on the front line now. <laughs> out of my way, it is. We'll go save it order. I've also never lifted a finger when it comes to actually fighting. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Bro, I mean, we say this, but died. if fucking like General Patton had died when he was on the front lines, we probably called him an NC too. <laughs> um, either way, um, after she's uh, been returned, um, following a uh, a period of mourning, uh, each of you gets a uh, invitation to the capital. Um, Ooh. one day. Um, you're, of course, allowed to bring any uh, people that you wish to come for. And some of you already have kind of an idea of what it is. Um, to those of you who are citizens of Griderdam, uh, you guys are treated to a uh, opulent ceremony of recognition. Um, you are given a uh, royal commission uh, for uh, essentially knighthood. Um, and to those who are not citizens of Griderdem, you're given an honorary knighthood uh, for your pivotal actions in the theater of Illicoven. At this time, uh, uh, John Vaught's uh, Si Senora um, has become almost a, uh, a national icon. Um, lots of pinup art is uh, being done with uh, like the Si Senora on it. You know, people are getting tattoos of it as it's <laughs> become kind of symbolic to uh like the um <clears throat> the uh, atlantic federation's success against the ruslanders um people from the usv are uh like uh, talking about it uh and years later it would show up in films uh probably in the 50s you know <clears throat> or uh, actually like 30s legends never die boys But uh, each of you guys uh, are able to uh, live your lives to the fullest. Thanks that you did. Thanks that you didn't die. I'm activating one of my traits. My my level 18 advancement. Okay. Let me get back to that fucking tab. I hit one knee. Yank out a big fat diamond ring. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna persuade her to marry me. Okay, let's see the persuade roll. Critical fail, cubic curse open. Okay, that's not good. All right, let's see here. I'm burning a Benny as well. I'm burning another Benny. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Thanks, dude. I had to burn all kinds of stuff for that. I'd give you a, I'd give you my last Benny for this session to help you out. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking persuade roll. All right, so let's see. Like, this right here didn't even help me. She's gonna resist. Let's see. Uh, oh, no. she's a wild card now. <laughs> she is a wild card. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you did make her do a wild card. This is your fault. You did this. You. Did... Ooh, she I can't win. come up with a good argument not to marry you. This is great. Nope. Nope. He's, he got her. He's too dashing and way too powerful in the military now. You got, got her, man. Like, yo, if you don't. If she doesn't take this, is like a fucking big fish just landing in your lap. You gotta take this one. <laughs> a former yeah, commander, to... doctor. Yeah, no, 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 uh, I no. I think there's a woman Maybe. in Oakhoven that would turn you down right now. There might be. Sir Dr. Axel. <laughs> Sir, Sir Dr. Captain Axel. Captain Dr. Axel. Of the. Of the Wait. Now of famous, the royal family. No, no. Of now the famous. Famously led the raid on the New Dawn, now titled the Alfred's Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Adelfred's Hammer. <laughs> okay. Hammer. Yeah. There you go. Wait, does this yeah. mean my character's name is now Sir Terminus Ending? <laughs> yes. Yes! We're all sirs and or madams. <laughs> Except for fucking Johan, he's honorary sir. Fucking real. Well, he doesn't, uh, well, he's got. Well, now he's famous. Now he's like super he'd have famous. To, he would have to actually renounce his uh, USV citizenship. He'd yeah. become yeah, a full no, citizen of Greater Dam. Yeah. He's, if I was him, I would just go around the Spanish coast again, banging every woman that turned me down before. What if he doesn't like women? <laughs> no, if that, that's thing. a twist right there. <laughs> no, I only have a thing for Russian POWs now. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. 
<laughs> Just fisting them for now on. Uh. I don't right, even well. do anything. I make the robots do it. Go so back to the storyline. <laughs> it ain't worth with. Listen, <laughs> it ain't listen. Good Jesus. Something's wrong with you people. But, uh. Having fun? We're all dying in a fire tonight. Yep. Yeah, but, uh. Mr. Vaught and Miss Shriver, uh. Being. Potent. Or being like, uh, I should say, uh. Full blown thrill seekers. Uh, just use the, the newfound fame as a springboard uh, in their international fucking sex ranger uh, like excursions going forward. Oh, how hell how yeah. does her uh, kind of weird the two are the two are, are best friends allegedly till the day that they die? I was so gonna what say, kind of weird kinky sex do you guys is... get up to? You? Do you like just <laughs> invite like random fucking pretty boys and pretty girls back to the back to the thing the fuck in front of you two? Is that what you guys do now? Now it's now it starts with do you know who I am? Yeah. <laughs> really, now listen. I want to know listen. how uh, how she's holding up to the radiation. That's where my curiosity stands. Does her face just slowly start to melt off as she's traveling the world? No. I probably would have built no, the Ripa at some uh, point. She is, uh, however. Um, going to be affected by it for the rest of her life. Some days she's too tired to get out of bed. Cool. I mean, I would be too if I was a playboy, but... <laughs> <laughs> True. But as long as she stays away from more radiation, she's generally alright. I wanted her to die. Until she about the dies cosmic of radiation. Rays that come through uh, while you're up in high altitude. <laughs> she, uh, every now and then, just dies, you know, on the beach. Just every so often. As you do. <laughs> but anyways um that's uh pretty much it is there anything else you guys want to know about uh anything that i missed I skipped over if not then uh gg boys what does terminus go on to do uh does he become well... our successful engineer oh i did forget to mention that uh, uh dr zandink is still alive yeah you <laughs> are reunited oh, yeah, I with him question I... He's uh, he is of course very impressed by your new frame. <clears throat> uh, he asks the rest of the group, like if uh, you know, if Terminus has been uh, uh, worthless, has been a good boy in his absence. Um, flashes of every mur man he's murdered suddenly pass through past his head, <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of goes, <laughs> "Yeah, he's been all right." Yeah, um, I want to talk to you real quick about something. <laughs> There's this whole maniacal laughter thing he does from time to time that we're just too scared to mention to him, like, <laughs> face to face, so if you could... He's oh, yeah. got a shotgun everywhere. It's really, he's really strong, too. I don't want to try and take it away from him. Are they saying it's like out of earshot or just like in front of me? Oh, we're just out of earshot. We're okay. just calling your dad about this. We're explaining all this directly to your dad now. He uh, walks. He stands up after you guys let him know about all of the murderous uh, impulses that uh, Terminus has. He says, "Oh well, uh, that's definitely something I should look into." He reaches into his uh, lab coat and pulls out a what looks like a remote control and presses a button. You see Terminus, ter Terminus turn off. <laughs> Had it the whole time. Oh. Back to the drawing oh, board. Oh no. <laughs> let him know about the. Let him know about. Uh... Oh, thank God. <laughs> Let him know about the other guy, the scientist, the, the, the fucking remote research. control like, rip. Like, we gotta work on this. Gotta... You remember? <laughs> you remember when the 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 other scientist, fucking Burkhart, looked Burkhart? in Terminus while he was unconscious, and he went, "Oh, oh, all right, <laughs> good, <laughs> that's good." The remote off. <laughs> He's like, "Oh, there's some sort of off switch in here." Okay. Okay, that's good. I'm not as worried now. <laughs> I mean, someone somewhere out there can turn him off remotely. I'm just more impressed as a wireless version of that. <laughs> yep. What do you think he and Voltez worked on back in the day, man? How the fuck would I know? No one talks to me about anything. <laughs> Wire I've been saying it the whole time. They have wireless communication. They have wireless transmission of electricity. They don't have that's wireless they communication. They have wired communication. <laughs> No one's, uh, really, no one's really picked up on it. Uh, speaking of which, that's one of the things I want Prastic to do. I want him to send a letter again to Tesla, inviting him to like come to leave fucking EIA, come over yep. here, 
surrender and just like let's work on fucking making all this shit let's making make a new shit. atomic future um anyways yeah he makes uh, some slight alterations to uh terminus's uh card shuffling system uh it just takes him a, a little bit of time like 15 minutes and uh when he powers terminus back up uh he says good now there's nothing stopping him oh my god <laughs> He has uh, removed Terminus's allegiance or necessity for allegiance to uh, Griderdam. He says, <laughs> Now my boy will have true free will. I knew it would work. Everybody like is like terrified. Goes crazy. Pulls a potion out of his pocket, drinks it. Starts foaming at the mouth <laughs> and dies. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> all right hold on Riz. i know all i right. kept this time for for this reason Let's roll get for that initiative. laser <laughs> don't put it right through the card shuffling system <laughs> terminus i just want you to know i loved you man <laughs> my favorite part of okay x just to be clarified are you completely serious about this scene Yes. Okay, that's the best part because I remember directly telling Sand Dink that I was afraid I would start killing everyone if I he did. <laughs> Fucking awesome. Okay, instead of using the iridium crystal, <laughs> the iridium crucible. To fucking activate my chainsaw and start going on a rampage, my character is instead going to just look pointedly at all of you. I remember telling you this was very dangerous, Boudwin. Well, uh, I see no reason that you should be given fetters that any normal man wouldn't have. Very well. I think going forward, rather than being pro programmed or compelled, you should do this on your own. There's much to learn about humanity and the human condition, and you're now poised to better understand it, making your own decisions as you go forward. Of course, should you go, well, insane, um, you have to realize that you'll have to deal with the consequences of that as well, like any man would. Uh, I imagine that prison time for you might be problematic as well. Uh, but while you are no man, there's no reason not to have you acknowledged as one as a thinking being a human well similarly in mind but altogether different thank you for the trust you've placed in me father now we should probably start having some philosophical conversation in the evening as it seems that you've grown uh, far beyond my initial conception um I think it's very important for you to understand why certain norms are adhered to in our society. And it doesn't seem to me as though the Dr. Prasik uh, has found uh, much need for any of this sort of interaction, while I would have assumed that this sort of scientific rigor uh, would be in his wheelhouse. It seems that explaining things is not exactly his uh, forte. The raising of children would seem to be something left to their better halves. We also well, did you, have a whole You lot see of time. how the fine job he did with his one child, a brute, <laughs> a, Whoa, a brute hey. war, warlike oh, officer. Oh, the guy's an officer in the army. Come on. That man can slob a knob faster than you can say, bada boy. <laughs> uh, he that reminds he, me, father. I also have an appointment with both the Din Commander and the Queen. How did you manage that? As for a threesome. I owe both of them a philosophical debate, as it were. Fascinating. Well, I should quite like to see uh, uh, how this unfolds. I'll try and get you involved in both of those debates. I think that certainly if you're able to gain an audience with the Queen, you should be making an argument for the personhood of uh, beings such as yourself. There may be more of your type coming in the future. We can only hope that is not the case. 
Why? For all the time, for all the things that I've learned, and the things that I've experienced, I have come to learn a great deal of many things that your kind and mine will never truly align. I do not know pain, sensory input, or several different... Um, how shall I put this? Chemical norms that you do. Hmm. Yes, uh, hormones can lead to slavish behavior in some. Well, to their norms, I suppose. Left to their own devices, my kind could very easily see this not as a blessing, but something that they will never be able to truly achieve. Well, it's an interesting conversation that needs to be had. And I can't think of a better audience than the Queen. Perhaps we should save that till later. It looks like Dr. Prasik and company are about to start drinking again. <laughs> oh, what are they drinking? And then he jumped from the balcony and held on to him. It was the craziest thing. It appears they, they were, were engaging in everywhere. cognac while recounting I... one of our previous exploits. I dove to the sideline and started gunning him down with everything I had. He's lying. He hid in the back and he shouted orders at us. <laughs> Takes a real man to lead. He's a good leader, though. I'll give him that. He's a... No, I lead from the front. That happened right there is all fuzzy. I think I got shocked. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever well, has a slur. <laughs> I think in real, like I think in reality, there's probably about a third of this campaign my character just doesn't remember because of all the punches. <laughs> Later on in life, you just can't recall why people have like. Yeah, I just like, have no idea about like, what happened. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, this? hold on, I got my buddy to make a re recording of all that. Here, you just hear. <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Well, yep, that uh, clears it all up. Gentlemen, thank you for playing in my stupid fucking COVID game. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> I have had a true blast uh, getting to run this. I hope you guys have had fun as well. Um, <clears throat> leave a, a like and a comment in the uh, description. <laughs> Do I have to subscribe or is it? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm going to need you to subscribe. Oh, well. All right, I mean, only subscribers will get uh, you know access to the premium content that is the World War II Atomic Punk version of uh this world so uh oh nice there it is can't wait to can't wait for plastic industries or plastic uh bauer <laughs> something else industries to have made uh the fucking micro fusion engines <laughs> that drive half that campaign's abilities and things Prassic i'm amazed that your character hasn't like slavered at the bit to get my character involved with like all of your shit Oh no, no, that's that's part of my epilogue. Is like literally yep. every other every other month you're getting a call from Prastic. Like, hey man, I've got these designs. I need you to <laughs> drop. My character just sits there with like a telecommunications wire just like hooked up into his building at this point. He's just like, yep. God damn it, again, Prastic. It's like you just like look at the phone, you see it, you know the only person calling you right now, it's gotta be Prastic. <laughs> On the white, on the, the fucking, there's an entire wall that's a whiteboard that's just like shit. I need to do. <laughs> shit, and then there's a separate whiteboard of shit. Prasic wants me to do. <laughs> uh, robot snow for snow. Bleh. Robot's work is never done. It's a good done. thing you don't need to sleep, right? It's a. And now that I have a uh, a secondary Sambange component, I don't know. I almost don't even no longer need to refuel. There you go, yeah. I know, I mean, <laughs> the irony is like, fucking <clears throat> Terminus will be like the main quest giver in fucking uh, the second game. <laughs> <laughs> I would just assume that like the good like version of my kill. character's ending is that he's just w the one of the only people or things on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't give a shit about fucking changes in gravity, fucking with my bone density, fuck that shit, I'm a robot. Yeah, you just build a new suit specifically. I just get stronger on Mars. on Mars. And you're good, yep. All that delicious iron. 
just sending back messages to Earth like, hey man, turns out Mars is pretty pretty cold. <laughs> pretty lonely up here. Just to get use World out of the War fucking space, man. Just to get use out of the language every now and again, fucking terminal, so just do like a random prank call in Italian. <laughs> pizza beer, pizza. <laughs> You say World War II in space, I hear space Nazis. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stalkright Zung will become a, a, a hyper-nationalist yep. <laughs> industrial powerhouse. Yeah, up again, they just, we save them only for them to turn into that. It's like the worst thing. Space Nazis. Good space Nazis. Alright, X, I think it's time for the last and most final and critical role that my character will ever make. Does my character get it on with the damn commander? I'm rolling Persuade. <laughs> yeah, they have a... Uh... Woo! Oh! No. Nope. <laughs> Alright, we have five bennies. Let's go. No. Oh. My I'll literal worst skill. I'll give you mine, too. Fuck it. You come by, you talk about uh you talk about trying to get it on. I joke about not uh you not having the right parts. Maybe you go back, you make four isn't fucking good enough. Get on the board, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, that's her role. You gotta beat that. I think you're gonna get shut on man. <laughs> Don't knock the boy down before he gives it a go. Alright, I don't think I'm g I don't think I'm getting better than a fucking twelve on a four D four minus two. <laughs> right. Gotta shoot your Pretty shot. good. Pretty goddamn good. But I guess all things are just not meant to be. The one thing that my character fails at, saving Prastic's granddaughter and banging the thing the damn commander. He can't Everyone have everything. everything. My character had to fail at something to grow, goddammit. Tell you as far as man. All right, who's running, who's running the next game? I guess I'll do it. Pathfinder two. Start reading. Oh, I already know Pathfinder. Ugh. Pathfinder two. Two. <laughs> oh, Does Pathfinder two, two have oracles. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, dude. I just remember it came out, and I was like, "That sounds kind of cool." Never went and learned. All right, after Hawk runs his Pathfinder two game, it's a I'll, really uh... crunchy system. Yep. Huh. I'll build the uh, I'll build another stars without number one, or maybe well, you know cyberpunk, just so I can enrage X the whole time as he sits there going that now. Don Dante. Well, I mean, uh, truth be told, I don't run cyberpunk in the cyberpunk world. I know. My... You said you run it in like some weird alternate reality. No, I, I run it in basically like kind of how I see this world going. Yeah. You know, it's much farther along. Uh, like, I mean, I guess it's twenty eighty five was my first game. But like, uh, it, like there's still corporations around, like Amazon and shit like that. Oh like, yeah, so you uh, can things use that real make world sense. References for stuff. Okay. Yeah, I use real well, world stuff. But it, yeah, I was like, and it's it set in places like San Pedro, like it's just, which is a shithole in real life. So I can't imagine it's, it's any better. It's a shithole in, in the game. Yeah, I mean, oh, if God. you look at if you look at parts of San Pedro around the harbor, dude, like right now, you would think it was fucking cyberpunk. It looks like all those shit out in. Uh, night city as you're driving around the outskirts of town it's fucking horrible uh, but that's where my first game took place and that's where they were all part of a fucking street gang csb 13 baby yeah but the thing is also you include um stuff from like neuromancer and snow crash like oh yeah yeah nods to those things which are obviously like Plenty. hugely important cyberpunk like books yeah like if you've read snow crash then um uh, you would be you would find it familiar that Radic AS, the uh the radical courier service is part of my world. You know. Oh, and then uh what what's the other one? Their competitor Roofways. Yeah. Which is basically just a, a bunch of dudes that do parkour. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's it's called Roofways. So their parkour whole thing kicks is, back like, off again and so you've seen like it doesn't die after that. <laughs> I mean, you've seen like the the dense mega structures in Night City from the game now. So like, imagine like that shit still happens in other cities in California, like big ass sprawls like that, right? 
So Roofways is a courier, courier service that instead of like being on the street, literally like parkours from like building veranda to building veranda, uh, like trying to deliver packages uh, that is like sensitive materials and it's meant to be off books, you know, it doesn't have to go through corporate customs like Radic AS does, you know, um, because certain things are illegal in certain parts of the city. Um, the, we have these ideas where there are um, uh, places that are their own, like, for lack of a better term, uh, quasi-national entities. Oh, places, like FOQ&E? Yeah. Franchise-operated quasi-national entities. Um, <clears throat> these are places that have their own constitutions within the city. Like, they're literally, like, you belong to a different country, even though, like, you leave your FOQ&E, your neighborhood, and you're out in, like, whatever city you're in, you so know? So technically, you're a citizen of Mr. Lee's Greater Hong Kong, you know, stuff like that. Gotcha. Yeah. The American government is not, like, it's got a presence on the East Coast, but largely it's collapsed. So everything in, like, the, the Colorados and out west of that is, like, all just free territory that's being propped up by, essentially, corporations. Um, they maintain a minimal like a uh, amount of uh, civility and uh, architecture for the the uh, people who are part of their, I should say, consumer base um, so that they can keep their commercialism going. Um, that arrives in the form of, uh, you know, water, power, trash reclamation. All of these things are managed by corporations instead of a state. And the, the Civil Management Bureau is uh, essentially a board of... Uh, corporates from all the major corporations in the area that essentially uh, govern over uh, like the city. So everyone's got their own rep at the table, but make no mistake, it's all corporate owned. Which corporate is uh, owning which part and who has power in which district and that kind of thing. Right. And that's where the corporate basically like basically like corporate gangs, for lack of better and the police, just like in real life, are basically only there to, to police the poor people who are not part of corporations, who don't have their own corporate citizenship. You know. They draw a paycheck that uh, essentially every corporation pays into. And theoretically, it's supposed to keep them from uh, like playing favorites Fairytale. to any corpora corporations. But obviously, uh, corporations just pay the cops in cash you know, when they want to buy, buy them off. Or through other means. You know, hmm. I kind of think I like that idea a little better. I mean, that's just uh, that's my take on like cyberpunk. So you'll see a lot of the same tropes, but instead of being centered in Night City, which like is cool, you know, I think that having a central location like that instead in my games, typically you're looking at a map of L.A., you know? Yeah, it's like the and L.A. Then, sprawl. It's huge. And then imagine that, like, the city doesn't stop. It goes all the way from SoCal to NorCal. Like, the entire seaboard, which, uh, that which hasn't been fucking claimed by the water, uh, sprawls most of the California coast. You know? I mean, a huge chunk of all this stuff that he's mentioned is just, like, pulled straight from Snow Crash. Yeah. So if you're familiar with that book at all, or if you read that book, you'll you'll see a lot of that a lot of that same stuff in there. Is the management bureau? That's not in there, right? No, the the CMB is not in there. No, that's but that's just like a logical container. Yeah. To kind of pick up whatever is left, but all the all the other stuff that you've identified, not all, but a lot of the other stuff, like obviously FOQ and E's the everything yeah. back east being basically uh there was like the major collapse where it's like not the u.s anymore it's just the u.s is basically back in the 13 original colonies and well and then like uh, just on the west coast or whatever systems of power like the cia and nsa in my game are like they've like stopped being part of the american government because they have a bunch of like uh like operatives with this like shadowy training that can be applied pretty much anywhere and without a federal government uh they were like well fuck it why do, why would we stop doing what we do you know and so now they've uh incorporated and they're called a uh, cianza corp yeah cia nsa yeah, yeah. Corp. 
Which is yeah, that's a that's and they're one part of the plot in regular information brokers, cyberpunk. basically. Yeah, the big five or whatever it was called in Cyberpunk. But yeah, I may run uh, Cyberpunk next. I'm gonna get my hands on the book and uh, have a look at it. Um, but I'm gonna take a little bit of a break. Mm -hmm. Fair. Plus, I mean, I've got to, like, from the ground up, think of a fucking, like, plot, you know. So, take some time off, and I'll uh, work on that. But the only person I'm not inviting back to play here is uh, Molly, so she can get out, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. If she's even still here. Our girl went to Haha, <laughs> joke's on you. She was never here. Damn. Well, now to play some Project Zomboid. Mm -hmm. Multiplayer. Uh, I don't hear that. With Hawk. Come on. I wish. Go back. Go back to the, the retail version. Yuck. <laughs> go back, dude. I can't. I, I cannot make myself go back. I want to. But I can't. It just looks like doo-doo. <laughs> 